Oh, hey guys, glad you could join me for today. Um, I was just taking a look at this calculator here and thinking, wow, this is a really useful tool. And then I got to thinking, you know, <clears throat> multiplying matrices on the calculator was quite a lot, quite a bit easier than multiplying them by hand. And then I was looking at this problem and thinking, you know what, this really wasn't that much fun to work through all of this work to solve these systems when we have perfectly good methods like substitution and elimination. If you didn't see this coming already, we're now going to use our calculator here as our route to solving these. So what we're going to do is we are going to put, let's go back to this one from, from our last video here, and let's put this as a matrix into our calculator. So okay, here we go. I'm going to clear these. <clears throat> I'm going to choose matrix A. We're going to edit it, and we are now going to make it a 3 by 4 matrix. Okay. Now, your calculator is not going to show it's augmented. It's not going to put that line in there. Um, but we should be able to just jump and put those in and just remember that that's there. So we've got, and I can just put it in right in order here. I don't I know I did a little row switching around here. We don't even have to worry about that in our calculator. 2, negative 1, 4, 3. 2, negative 1, 4, negative. I don't know what I did. Let's try that again. Second matrix edit. Two, negative one. Four, was it negative three? It was negative three. I think what's happening is I'm using my keyboard to do minus. There we go. All right, we've got 1, negative 2, negative 10, negative 6. And we have 3, 0, 4, 7. All right, so now what? Well, let's quit out of that. Okay. And now we're going to go into matrix. And notice in matrix, okay, we've always we've done names and then we just flip over quickly to edit. Well, if you go to the math option here, you will see a lot of operations that we can put uh, onto our matrix. Okay. And if we head down here, okay, REF stands for row echelon form. So let's select that. And let's tell the calculator we want row echelon form of, now go back, get matrix A of matrix A. And that's what we have. Cool. Okay. That's doing all of this work instead of by hand doing it for us. Okay. And let's take a look back at our calculator here. And I'm looking at this last row like we look at, which tells us 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals 1.17. Does that match up here with what we got? Ah. Where's our solution for this? Did we get, no, we had z equals negative one half. So that tells me maybe I typed something in wrong on my calculator. Let me go back. Two, negative one, four, negative three. One, negative two, negative ten, negative six. Aha. And you guys didn't say anything. Let's 
get that negative in there where it belongs. There we go. Now let's quit. Let's run that same operation again. There it is. We see z is negative one half. Then we can use that to substitute into these others, and we're good. Okay, so we can see that our calculator can do all of this work for us. Okay. And you say, okay, well, what's better than that? Right? What's better than that? Well, there actually is one thing that's better. It's instead of row echelon form, what we call reduced row echelon form. And it looks like this. We still have the ones on the diagonals and the zeros underneath, but we also have zeros above. And why do we like this? Well, let's put this back into equations. Okay. Our top equation here would tell us 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals a. That's solve for x. And this one tells us 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals b. And this tells us 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals c. If we can get it into reduced row echelon form, okay, we have it solved. It's not like we're just solving for z and we're back substituting. We have it solved for everything. Now, I didn't have you guys do this by hand because it ends up almost like doubling that work that we had to do before. However, we're not doing it by hand anymore. We're using our lovely calculator. So let's go back into matrix and let's go over to math and underneath redu row, <laughs> redu row echelon form, we have reduced row echelon form. Okay, this abbreviation on our calculator is R-R-E-F, reduced row echelon form. So let's tell our calculator to do reduced row echelon form of matrix A. And that gives us X is equal to 3, Y is equal to 7, Z is equal to negative 1 half, which are our solutions for this system. Actually, it's not, is it? I said X is 15. What happened here? Oh, I lost my negative on my 6. Okay, there we go. X is 3. So I guess my last video has a mistake. I don't know if any of you caught it. Okay, but there it is. Okay. Another reason to benefit to using calculators is there's lots of room for mistakes when we do this. All right, so we can now use our calculator, which means we don't need to practice really solving a system where I say, here's a system, solve it. What we need more practice is are on word problems here, solving an actual problem using this. And the actual solving part is going to be really easy. It's just the setting up that takes a little bit of time. So let's look at this first problem. In a group of 100 adults, 70 say that they're most likely to do spring house cleaning in March, April, or May. I don't know if... Does that mean like a bunch of them think February is spring or if they think June is spring? I guess technically June is still spring up until whatever the 20th. But 70 is say that March, April, May is when they do their spring house cleaning. Um, of these 70, the number in April is 14 more than the total number who clean in March and May. The total number who clean in April and May is two, time, two more than three times the number who clean in March. Find the number who clean in each month. It's kind of like this problem's a riddle. So the first thing we should do is probably define our variables. Okay, what do we want x to be? What do we want y to be? What do we want z to be? Well, what are we trying to find? The number who clean in each month. So let's let x be the number of people who clean in April. And okay, let's let y be the number of people who clean in Oops, let's switch that. Let's let X be March, Y be April, and Z be the number of people who clean in May. All right, so let's see if we can do this. What do we know? 70 say that they're most likely to do it in March, April, or May. Well, that's the total number of people clean in March, the total number of people clean in April, the total number of people who clean in May has to be 70. My first equation is x plus y plus z equals 70. Second one, of these 70, the number who clean in April is, so April is y, 
is tells me equal is 14 more than the total number who clean in March and May. The total who clean in March and May would be X plus Z. And we know April is 14 more. So if we take this total and add 14, we're going to get what Y is. Y is 14 more than X plus Z. So X plus Z plus 14 equals Y. Lastly, the total number who clean in April and May, total who clean in April and May, that's Y plus Z, is, is tells me equal, two more than three times the number who clean in March. March is X. So we have to take three times the number who clean in March, three X, and then two more than that. Okay, the total who clean in April and May is two more than three times the number that clean in March. There's our system. Now all we have to do is get into uh, the form that we typically like. So uh, we're going to write this as x plus y plus z equals 70. Now on this one, let's subtract over the x, subtract over the z. We have negative x plus y minus z equals 14. And on this one, I'm going to subtract over the 3x, negative 3x plus y plus z equals 2. Now, let's write that as a matrix and let's use our calculator. So I see 1, 1, 1, and 70. So let's go into matrix. Let's edit matrix A. Is it still a three by four? Three rows, four columns, yes it is. So we've got, what do we say? One, 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 70. Then we have negative one, one, negative one, 14. Negative one, one, negative one, 14. And then we have negative 3, 1, 1, 2. Negative 3, 1, 1, 2. I think that looks good. Now I will quit out of this. Let me clear all that stuff out. I'm going to go to matrix. I am going to go to math. I am going to go find reduced row echelon form. And I'm going to choose to find the reduced row echelon form of matrix A. And there it is. So what does this tell us? It tells us 1x, 0y, 0z equals 17, x equals 17. So 14 people clean in March. Y is equal to 42, clean in April. And Z would be 11, clean in May. So like I mentioned, most of the work goes into setting up your system. Um, once you have it set up, make sure that you put it into our normal form where X is Y, Z is equals constants. Put that in as a matrix. Find your new or reduced row echelon form and enjoy this powerful new tool that you have to solve systems with. Okay, thanks for watching.